this is Michaela Thurman with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you're watching the Video Voters Guide or listening to our podcast. We're here today to talk with a candidate running in the May 21st, 2024 primary election. We're grateful for the support of the Carol and Velma Saline Foundation, the League of Women Voters of Portland Education Fund, the Weiss Foundation, and our media partner, Metro East Community Media. With me is Willie Chotzen, running for State House District 46, which covers Southeast Portland, including the Jade District. Welcome, Mr. Chosen. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you having me. Happy to have you. So if you can start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and why you're running for this office. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my name is Willie Chotzen. I am a dad to a one-year-old and a three-year-old, um, and I'm a former public school teacher, and I'm currently a public defender in downtown Portland. Um, and I was born in Ashland, Oregon, and really my life's work has been about trying to level the playing field, trying to fight for a more equitable world. So first I became, after college, a middle school math teacher. Um, loved teaching middle school math, um, have the utmost respect for the teaching profession, and I really left that experience with, with two key takeaways. Number one, I think that public education is absolutely the key um, to really leveling the playing fields and really giving everybody a chance. Uh, but I also came out of that experience seeing educational inequity up close. I taught these incredible students, um, but they were coming to me at, at 11 and 12 years old in dramatically different places academically in their lives. Um, and it really wasn't about their ability. It was about the situations they'd been born into, um, the circumstances of their lives. And so from then, I really became passionate about how do we level that playing field? How do we create a more fair society? Um, and I left the teaching profession to go to law school. Uh, I spent my time in law school predominantly uh, working in a legal aid clinic. So I represented families on evictions and foreclosures, trying to keep them in their homes. And I also took wage theft claims, um, representing workers who had been stolen uh, their wages from their employers, trying to help them regain those law wages and, and hold those employers accountable. And then after law school, I made one of my best decisions. I moved back home to Oregon. Um, and since then, I've been working at the Portland Public Defender's Office. And I absolutely love being a public defender. I love the work I do. Um, but it has put me really up close and proximate with a lot of Portland's most challenging issues right now. So certainly, I've, I've seen the public defender shortage up close. I've seen a lot of flaws in our criminal legal system. Um, but even more broadly, I've tried to get clients into treatment when there are no treatment beds available. And I've tried to help clients who are houseless um, get into housing when there are no shelter beds available and there's no housing that's affordable in the community. And so I've really seen the, these issues up close. And that's really what drove me to run for office, was feeling like as a public defender, I had this firsthand experience into homelessness and addiction and mental illness uh, that was really missing from the legislature. I had something to add to that conversation that wasn't being represented or heard. Um, and so that's why I decided to run, because, you know, at, at its core, I believe in a safe community and a thriving community. And what I'm trying to answer is the question, you know, what if we had a world where we didn't need so many public defenders, where we were actually proactively addressing the root causes of harm? Uh, and I believe we can do that in four ways, by improving our public education system, by expanding access to treatment in our community, by building more affordable housing, and by really doubling down on, on our transportation safety and our transportation systems to connect our community. Um, and so that's really what drove me to run for office because I think that an educated, uh, healthy, housed, connected community is a much safer and much more thriving community. And I wanna bring my experience as a public defender to that work. Thank you for that response. So the next question, what changes, if any, would you support in the state legislature to address the issues of climate change? Yeah. Um, a, a lot of changes. I think we could spend a long time talking about that problem um, because I think climate change is really the existential threat that we're, that we're facing. And everything I was just talking about, getting those things right is important, um, but nothing we do is, is going to matter if we don't address our climate crisis. It is already happening. We are already experiencing climate change, um, and we're already seeing that the people and the groups who are being impacted most are our most marginalized communities and our BIPOC communities and our low-income communities. Um, so I would support a lot of changes. I, I think that we need to be aggressive in, in protecting our environment. Um, but just to give one specific example, uh, the most uh, biggest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the state of Oregon is our transportation sector. That makes up about 40% um, of greenhouse gas emissions throughout the state. And next legislative cycle is going to be a really important um, session to focus on transportation. I think that's a huge opportunity for our state to get this right and move on the right course. 
Um, so specifically focusing on transportation as this huge opportunity, um, we absolutely need to shore up our existing roads and bridges and, and things like that. Um, but I want to figure out how we can build a, a community that is connected in more ways than just via cars. Um, so to me, that means making walking more safeable, making biking more safeable, things more, more safe. Um, that's active transportation, as well as building out our public transportation system, making sure that's safe and accessible and efficient um, so that people have options besides simply driving um, from place to place in their cars. So I think that if we can get that right and we can really connect our communities in more ways than just with um, you know, single occupant uh, car trips, we can really bring down uh, the amount of vehicle miles traveled. We can really make a big, big difference uh, in the amount of greenhouse gases that we're putting into the community. Beyond that, I support um, permanent funding for the electric vehicle rebate program, um, which is very, very popular, but ran out of funds recently. Um, and I support programs that make our homes more energy efficient. Uh, there's a lot that we can do to enjoy our same quality of life, uh, but really support families to use less energy consumption in their day-to-day -day activities. Thank you. Uh, next question, would you support or oppose the creation of a Citizens Independent Redistricting Commission to redraw state and congressional election districts? And please explain your answer. Absolutely. Um, I support that. I think that uh, I am a proud Democrat, but the absolute first priority is to support democracy itself. Um, and I think independent redistricting is a really great opportunity to make sure that we are creating elections that are fair and that everyone has a true voice in the system. Um, I don't think that that the way in which our um, elections run should be determined by whichever party is in control. I think that Democrats will continue to enjoy a majority in Oregon if we continue to have the best ideas to move the state forward, to address our most pressing issues, um, and to really improve the lives of, of the people who are living here. Um, so I do support an independent redistricting commission. I think that, that that is a great way to ensure fairness in the system. But I also think that that conversation is really best had at the national level. The nine states that I'm aware of that have currently adopted independent redistricting all tend to be Democrat-controlled states. Um, and while I think that we should be doing everything that we can uh, to make our own elections more fair, I also see an issue um, if different parties and, and different states are playing by different sets of rules. Um, so I would do everything I could in Oregon to support independent redistricting, um, but I think that for the sake of the entire country, pushing that conversation forward at the national level and making sure every single state is paying by the same rule book um, is really where we could get the most um, benefit for our entire community. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chotzen. Well, this concludes our video voters guide and podcast interview with Willie Chotzen running for State House District 46. A reminder that election day is Tuesday, May 21st, and ballots will be mailed beginning May 1st. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for your interest.